So let's uh, make things a little bit more complicated. What if I want to stick tile to concrete, to concrete slabs? Um, lots of concrete slab on grades in the United States, and, and um, sometimes you can use modified mortar, and sometimes you can't. <laughs> what's, what's going on? Well, if you're in California, uh, where we should build a wall between California and the rest of the country, because we don't want this stupid practice that I'm going to tell you about to get outside of California, is they put a plastic vapor barrier on the ground and then put an inch or two of sand between that and the, and the concrete. And what happens is that the sand becomes a water reservoir and the water can't dry down through the, the plastic. It has to dry up through the concrete. Well, if you were to stick uh, tile on a concrete slab using polymer modified mortar, that layer will end up staying almost perpetually wet and over time the high alkalinity will cause the polymer to re-emulsify. It basically turns into, into goop or snot and you get a, you get a failure. But if you um, don't have the, pla the water reservoir, the sand, and you have nice low water to cement ratio concrete, right on uh, a plastic vapor barrier as, as, as uh, the physics gods intended, uh, then you actually can use uh, a polymer modified uh, thin set to, uh, to make it work, but not with really big tile because you still need some evaporation to occur in the joints of the tile. So if you have big pieces of tile, you're going to have to go to unmodified uh, thin set because it's made out of cement and since concrete is made out of cement and aggregate and thin set is cement apparently cement is compatible with cement and things are just you know pretty awesome except and there's there's always this except thing that that that, that happens um, for the concrete or sort of the cement tinker toy uh, to create to become a tinker toy a chemical reaction uh, takes place and the reaction doesn't require the evaporation of water. That's why, for example, uh, we can place concrete under water and it, it cures, it gets, it gets hard, simply because of the, the chemical reaction. And that, that's, that's, that's kind of neat. Um, the second tinker toy, the uh, polymer tinker toy, requires evaporation. And that makes things complicated. Um, you have a, uh, something called an emulsion. And, and think of um, a whole bunch of polymer spaghettis that are in a sauce, and the sauce is water. And what has to happen is the water has to evaporate to allow the spaghettis to get closely enough together uh, to create their tinker toy structure. So we need evaporation for the polymer tinker toy to occur, and we don't need evaporation for the cement tinker toy uh, to occur. Um, that can be a real problem if you are trying to use a polymer modified uh, thin set over something like waterproofing. It can't dry down and it can't dry, dry up. But let's say you get that sorted out and, and it actually sticks. Well, if the uh, polymer modified thin set gets wet again or stays wet and we have a highly alkaline environment, well, which is what you'd get with with cement, um, the bond can, can fail and uh, the, the mixture turns back into snot, <laughs> which is a, an engineering term. Um, we often use an incorrect term, but it's common to so people we communicate. We say that it's re-emulsified. It, it, it goes back into its original com components. That's actually not really strictly what happens. Um, a hydrolysis reaction takes place because of the high alkalinity and it basically busts apart uh, the polymer tinker toy. Uh, the resulting stuff looks like it's re-emulsified, but it hasn't. It's just turned to snot. 